Oh, yeah, just quickly check. Uh, is it car or is it cur? Because I've sometimes heard car spelling it's, pronounced it's, cur. It's car, but I believe the it's derived from the ancient cur as far as Scottishness goes, but it's pronounced right. car. Yeah, there's a comedian who's Humphrey Humphrey Car. Oh no, he spelled Kerr, but he's pronounced Kerr. So okay, yes, whatever. I'll just start. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, um, yeah, Kevin, Kevin Carr, thank you for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me. It's nice to have something to do during lockdown. So, uh, for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, talking about you know being a a, a cocktail bartender. Uh, you've probably seen trends come and go, fashions change. There was once a bit of standoffishness about putting whiskey into uh, a cocktail. Is that something you'd say you've seen change over, over the years? Uh, definitely. I think there is still a little bit of standoffishness about malt. And to an extent, I think that's almost a positive negative because I think we should be really proud of the liquid we produce. And I would never suggest sticking, you know, a beautiful 30-year-old whiskey in a cocktail. But I think there has been a necessity to change to make whiskey a little bit more accessible um, to a wider audience. And I think that's been a really positive thing. There's um, a bar in London called Black Rock that kind of exclusively does highball cocktails. They're doing really well. Mm. Gate in Glasgow um, does really cool stuff with that too. So, you know, I think that it's becoming a little bit more of a relaxed attitude to how we drink our whiskey. And from a personal point of view, I would never tell anyone how to drink their whiskey. Hmm. I think even there's a disagreement over, you know, water and ice and stuff like that. So yeah, that can that can lead to very long arguments. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So for me, enjoy your whiskey, enjoy it the way you want to have it, the way you want to drink it, and uh, everyone's going to be happy. Hmm. It's actually yeah, thinking about it, like so, Scotland, Ireland, we're the traditional home of whiskey. Does that mean it's a place of greater innovation when it comes to whiskey or actually are people a little more conservative here with how they treat their favorite spirits? I would say we are definitely more conservative. It may be a little bit of a pride thing, but uh, for sure in Asia, Japan specifically, they've kind of always drank their whiskey as a highball while still having that kind of reverence to it, to, to scotch, I suppose. I think because we have Scottish whiskey, yeah. that is definitely a set way of how we should drink these things. But Attitudes are definitely starting to change and I think that's a positive thing because it means that we can start to do more with whiskey. Mm. And yourself particularly, that's sort of uh, what, uh, what you spend yeah, exactly. a lot of your time doing. Uh, how do you generally approach making up a whole new cocktail? It can, it can change every time in terms of where the inspiration comes from, whether I'm wanting to try a different technique or different flavour combinations. But for me, I always start with the base spirit. So say for example, if I was wanting to pair some flavors together, I would work back the way to get what spirit I would want to use. So if we were talking in Scotch whiskey terms, if I was making something kind of tropical, maybe with pineapple, I'd work back to a Craig Ellicke or an Ardbeg. If I was making something with chocolate and coffee, I'd work back to a Talisker. Mm. You know, so it's, it's, it's why it's important for bartenders to try a wide variety of liquids so that they can work back to get to what spirit would match their cocktail best. Good excuse to try a wide variety of uh, whiskies as well. The samples help, Sam. I'm not going to lie to you. The samples help. Yeah, if, if you want your whiskey in a sample, send it over. <laughs> and it'll, it'll exactly. Work I will do something with it. Um, are there any wild combos that you've discovered uh, that really shouldn't work on paper, but when you bring them together, you're like, wow, okay, yeah, I can do something with this? Uh, it might look that way to people that come into the bar with some of the crazy combinations. <laughs> I usually use, uh, especially with kind of using more vegetal flavours. Um, but to be honest, no, I think everything that goes into the glass is done in quite a logical way. Mm. To be honest, it's, it's usually the opposite. Sometimes I can spend hours on cocktails where I've got two flavours that I know work mm. together and for whatever reason, I just cannot get them to pair well together in the glass. Uh, so unfortunately, it's usually the flip side of that. When you made your winning cocktail for Glen Farkless, you had to work with the Glen Farkless 105, which is a pretty strong spirit really strong flavors yes. really strong in alcohol was it difficult to work with this one what are the kind of peculiarities to that one whiskey itself it was difficult i i personally love working with cast strength whiskey 
mm. because you know all the flavors are very densely packed together in the very beginning and you can choose how you separate them out and what you want to highlight the the challenge with the Glenbarclays 105 was the brief we were given so it was intended to be a signature serve and Glenbarclays sponsor the Glenbarclays race at Cheltenham mm. so this cocktail was to be you know their kind of big cocktail giveaway at Cheltenham so it was for kind of a mass audience and no that's where the yeah, exactly. It, it's, it's not the pressure of making a cocktail for a mass audience. It's the pressure of doing it with a 60% whiskey. Yeah. Um, so for me, it was a case of how do I soften this to make it a little bit more accessible, but still keep the, the flavours and the, you know, the intent that it's, it's Glenbarclays 105. Cause mm. it's, in terms of the history of whiskey, it's really important. It's not just a beautiful dram. It was the first commercially available cast strength whiskey. So... Mm. I didn't actually want to kind of dilute it out too much. I wanted to retain that cast strength, but also, you know, it's not a first pet, it's a 60% whiskey. So <laughs> it had to be done in a way that could make it accessible to, you know, a wide variety of people and hopefully introduce people to the concept of cast strength whiskies. And I have to say though, when trying to thinking of making something accessible, green peas isn't the first place I go. <laughs> no, probably not. Um, Obviously, Glenfarclas means Valley of the Green Grass. So I was I was intent on making this cocktail green come hell or high water. Uh, I started kind of using seaweed, that didn't work. Uh, I used kiwis, that did work, but I, I wanted all the fruit flavour to come from the Glenfarclas because it is such a fruity whiskey and I wanted to highlight that without adding any extra fruit in. Mm. So sugar snap peas works really well with a lot of things. You know, it kind of put a vegetal note underneath it, which highlights the sweeter things. Uh, a slight bit of salinity uh, and I think it's I think it's you know <laughs> it comes from the world of bacon I suppose but if you want something to taste sweeter you add salt if you want something to block bitterness you add salt mm. so putting you know that kind of vegetal note underneath it really made the kind of burnt caramel and toffee notes and the, the fruitiness really come to the fore which is for me the accessible flavours in the 105 so those are the ones that I really wanted to highlight to an audience. That's That's pretty inspired I've got to say. So you head up the bar at uh, Glasgow's Urban Bar and Brasserie. Sure what do. does a typical evening there look like for you? Uh, a lot of running around. <laughs> we're quite uh, we're right in the city centre, so we're a busy place. Um, I think we are known more now as a cocktail bar, so I'm making a lot of cocktails, which is great. Hmm. Um, but you know, every night's different. Every night's different. I've got uh, we've got great staff there, so. There's never usually any hassles in that front, but you know we do get some interesting characters in being just next to George Square in the city centre. There's yeah, yeah. Usually, usually some event or other happening, so it's uh, it keeps you it keeps you on your toes. So when this uh, lockdown ends and we're able to start going to bars and restaurants again, tell us why the Urban Bar and Brasserie should be the first place people go to celebrate. <laughs> It should absolutely be the first time I'm expecting to see you at the bar um, <laughs> come come hour zero. We, uh, I mean, from a, from a whiskey point of view, we've actually got a really, really good selection of whiskeys. Um, you know, there's nothing I have on the back bar that I wouldn't drink myself, which is something that I pride myself in. And we, uh, we were actually just about to launch a new cocktail menu before lockdown started. And we do actually have a full section of whiskey highballs. So if anyone actually wanted to, you know, come and try this concept, it would be a really good place to start. Perfect. And that menu that was ready to go, is it sort of undergoing more refinements now? Um, are, are people still working on it, making sure it's the best it can be when lockdown's over? No, I, I, <laughs> I, I legitimately had spent about three months on it before lockdown started. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, it was kind of done. And then I went on holiday to New Orleans, got stuck there once Trump cancelled all the flights into the US, hmm. was coming back to launch the menu. And that's when the lockdown started. So it's, it's sitting there, it'll be that menu that launches. Um, I don't really want to go back to it because I'll end up changing absolutely everything. Yeah, as it's, I it's to now. That, that's that, that's so, it's probably at a place where it should be. Yeah, exactly. And then when folks come to visit, obviously uh, you'll be there making the cocktails. So as a kind of teaser for that day, would you like to give us a taste of your cocktail making skills uh, just now? Uh, absolutely. By the power of video editing, I will <laughs> transport you to my bar. <laughs> See if that makes the cut. 